That's my favorite um, stock. <laughs> really? So this is um, five years. Wow. It's come down. Really? This is five years. And then now I'm going to just zoom into this um, October 21st, like since this 412 high. Is it mostly coming down because Musk has been selling and selling? And he's not a bad guy since he bought Twitter and <laughs> allowing anybody. Um, I think it's mostly because it's a sensitive it's a uh, stocks that are very interest sensitive. It's a growth stocks and they're very sensitive to interest rates. As the moment right. interest rates go up, um, these things have no value anymore because when you have risk-free money, people just pile in into any growth stocks and trying to earn the, on, um, on capital, on the gains of the stocks. I would agree with that. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting with earnings coming, I guess, on um, the 25th. It's doing some big green volume in this bottom. Let me just um, raise this up a little bit. Some big green volume as it cuts this bottom. If you want to call it a bottom, today was a nice day. I traded this today above the support level. It gapped right above the, sorry, above the res Prior resistance, it gapped right above it. That was a nice trade today. And there's a, a pretty steep um, downtrend line. So it's, I don't know, depending oh. where you want to draw it. Oops, where'd that go? Sorry. You, When you say you traded it today, you mean long or short? Oh. I went long today. I'm going to just switch to uh, five minutes. That's the line I just drew. Let me take that out. Um, traded it from here. Whoa. There. There. <laughs> this morning little run. That looks like a very juicy profit. And I how, how did how did you know? How did you know uh, that it was con gonna gap and go? Were, were there any indicators that you use to identify that? Because sometimes it just gap and fail. Um. Well, let me go back to the daily. And I'm gonna zoom in on this little on here the past couple of weeks sorry well um okay so i like to draw lines and boxes around things so what i see is i see a a level right around 124 and i feel like i can kind of draw a box around this chunk and maybe there's another box that i can draw around this chunk, this littler chunk. Mm -hmm. So it's, if it's doing these five bars, this is essentially noise. It's trading sideways in this range. When it gaps up above here, now it's doing something new. There's something that's making people push it to new levels, not just bear bull battle, which is going on in here, with sideways trading, but something new is happening. Buyers have moved it to a new level. So when I see this in the pre-market, looking to open at like in the 125s, okay, now I'm gonna go to a five minute chart. You can see, or let's go to a 15 minute chart. You can see these boxes that we drew before. This is noise, this is, bearable battle in the same price range. It's a big price range. You could channel trade this off the bottoms and tops, but that's not my trade. My trade is when it's doing something new, I want to catch the power of the new move. 
Thank you for sharing. That's very insightful. You 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 slapped me in the face there and threw some water on me, and I really appreciate that. I like that that uh, those the words you said. I like to trade when it's doing something new. I am one of the the, the banes of my trading is channels. <laughs> so I, I I need to not trade channels and trade when it's doing something new. I like that terminology. Yeah, I like your view of the, uh, your term of use of the term noise. So it's going up and down in that box and you're just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're just- Avoiding. Shrugging, you're shrugging it off. Yeah. What, what's happening so, in that box? is people are shorting the tops and buying the bottoms, the smart people on the way. But today, it, it broke out above her box. And, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a breakout over resistance. You have new buying. You also have a lot of short covering, I'm sure. So Beth, in this daily chart there, what time did you go long and did you exit or are you still long as of now? Let's see if I have my, um, wait a sec. Let's see if I can show my trade. Why isn't this loading? There we go. So this is the trade I did today. This is part of my journaling that I, the way I annotate charts. I trade in Street Smart Edge, which is Schwab, but then I come to Trading View to annotate. So this is the daily chart. And I noted to myself that I was trading this setup that I'm tracking a gap above a short-term level. And I chased a bit early. I thought this was a pause that could continue. So I chased it a bit up, stopped out here for a loss. And then when it started bouncing up again, I made a new trade long that I ran to here. And I trade options. So these are gains on the options. So are you buying calls? This was buying calls. I bought calls here, sold to close here for a loss, buy to open new calls here, and sell to close here. These are calls that expired this Friday? Yes. This was the, um, I don't have it in front of me which call I traded. I'm going to guess, since I got, I, I'm going to guess it was a 126 call for this Friday's expiration. Or maybe it was the 120. Maybe this one was a 127 call. I don't know. I usually trade the first out of the money option. So in these sort of very short, you know, hour trades, why would why would you do the options as opposed to the stock? Just because of money? I mean, cash is less? I... Please go to the YouTube channel, watch my presentation from November. But the short answer is, I like the way that options help me manage risk. I like it that if I take X dollar size position, I know that I can't lose more than all of it. And so um, just in case, um, so I like it that with a small amount of capital, I can make big gains. And I like it that my risk is absolutely controlled at everything, that there's no scenario where uh, something, you know, flushes and I try to hold on and I wish and I hope, and then all of a sudden it's $30 down or something. I am very risk controlled by the size of my position. Even though I strive to not lose the entire position, if I lost the entire position, I won't be hurt. And so I can make nice gains with small capital 
And I like, I like the option scalping. I like the really fast moves that I can get um, without deploying a lot of capital. Yeah, that's some of the reasons I also like options. So Tesla is great because the liquidity is huge. Very few stocks you can sort of, you know, have so much liquidity in options like Tesla. So somehow you're limited uh, of choices if to do this on other stocks. Yeah, it is. Um, it's harder to find options that are liquid enough, but I, I can usually find in the big caps plenty of Google's, Apple, Netflix, Meta. There's a quite a lot of big caps that have very liquid options to trade. Do you ever trade long term, like buy a year ahead out of call options or not? Not on options. I have what I call like my incredibly fast option scalping trading. And then I have my very, very long term investing that I don't ever look at. <laughs> Yeah, the advantage of this is that the, the, the time premium is, is, is nothing for this Friday. So you don't have that cost if you buy, which I sometimes I do buy long calls like a year ahead that I have the huge time premium. But um, if, if the stock is down, like right now, I was thinking buying a 150 January 2024 Tesla option could be, you know, a, a long, a, a good, I mean, you it's a lot of money, but you could be a long call on Tesla. But maybe Tesla, look, earnings are in a week. Like Tesla could maybe go to 148 or 150 before earnings, but I wouldn't want to hold it through earnings. Well, maybe if it's a year out, maybe you're willing to hold it, but you're going to have a risk premium in the option right as you go into earnings. I don't know how it is on the long expirations, but right now, and the closer we get to earnings, all right. Uh, prices are, I don't know all the terminology, but it's very exaggerated because of the risk event. Yes. I mean, the, if, if it's a year out, it, it has less of an impact, but definitely, yes, it's it's more expensive now. The, the, it's uh, the, 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 uh, going into earnings. You yeah. Mean? Going into earnings. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, if you, if you're looking at a year from now, it has less of an impact. It's still, yes. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was looking at that slide with maybe, play some um, spreads. What I would maybe do here is maybe sell the 120 put and, and buy the 110 put a year ahead. And you know, that, that kind of spread, that's something that I, I I would play on Tesla or maybe even a few months out, I, I would play a spread on, on, on the situation. So I'm, I'm also long Tesla generally about the future of the company, I think is, is good. But uh, yeah, this is- Going a, back to the daily chart, I just want to show you this again, this five-year- um weekly view i mean i think if if the earnings are received badly it can go into or below the 90s wow wow yeah hey beth can you go back to the chart with your actual trade if you don't mind because you know as everyone knows the hardest thing to do is no one when to sell and uh I just want to explore this. I, I want to take you through your mind because it would help me because I'm sitting there debating when to sell a lot and it, it's tough. So you followed it all the way up. Um, so this isn't um, exactly typical of me because by the time I traded this position right. and the other things that I traded today and by the time it was 9.40, I um, didn't have a lot of money to buy a very many calls. I have, a, I have a cash account. That's another thing that I do to put guardrails around myself and not lose too much too fast. So I this was a very small position and I wasn't looking to divide it. So normally I might do something like take off at a profit target on the way up, meaning a P&L target and then trail a stop on the rest. So this is a little bit of a trail a stop on the rest in that my initial stop was here. When it made a new high, I moved up my stop to here. And then this was really strong, a strong move and nice volume. 
And I'm just going to go back and see what SPY was doing at the same time. So now we're talking about 10 a.m. And at 10 a.m., SPY was doing this gigantic bar here. This lower left corner is oh, I see. Chart of SPY. Oh, I see. So market was strong and my stock was strong and the other things that I was watching were strong going into here. So I'm going to let that run. At a certain point, I need to move up my stop. So okay. I'm looking at SPY in here just after 10 o'clock, stalling and going sideways. Right. And Tesla went a little bit higher. But and I this let is what I want to ask you. But you, didn't it sell. This... Hmm? you didn't sell there because I'd be wondering in my mind what to do. You didn't sell there, then it went down. You I was not comfortable. I didn't up. sell, but I didn't love it either. Yeah. If I was thinking of dividing my position, I might have put a stop here. I see. I wasn't thinking of dividing. So I rode this. And when it went up again and back to right? So then my stop is under here. After it starts, so I'm pointing, that doesn't help. After it did this bounce, uh, I was able to move my stop under here. And when it started getting tough in here, I call this hard work, as if trading's hard work. But I call this hard work when it's, you know, consolidating or basing. And also the SPY at the same time was consolidating and base, basing and starting to turn down. And then I decided I after this bar, I didn't want to go back down below 129, that this 130 was too tough to stay above. And I just, I mean, dumped it basically as it, right. after this, I don't know if you can see this. Um, sort so of you were watching it. Reversal bar here. You were watching it and then did a, a market order or whatever, or did you put a stop and the stop executed? So I use a kind of automated stop that's based, I'm trading the option, but I'm using the stock price. So my order says, if Tesla goes below, maybe I used 129.44 or something. If Tesla goes below 129.44, then close my option at a market order. Huh. See, what's fascinating to me psychologically and maybe for you, it's not a big deal. But for me, the fact that before when it hit that $130.50 and then it went down, you right there, when it went down, you didn't sell, you didn't flinch. And sure enough, it I flinched, but I didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like this. I did not right. like this at all. And then it came back up and I was happy. And then it started to be hard work. And I thought, I'm not in for hard work. And yeah. the market was rolling over at the same time. And I ditched. So from the moment that you bought to the moment that you sold, how many times did you adjust the stop order? So an initial stop here, one. This is my initial stop. Is that one or not one? This was the first stop. Below here was the second stop. And then below here was the third stop. And then below here was the fourth stop that stopped me out. Right. And yeah. this gain, this 50% gain, was only a little bit bigger than this loss because this orange position was big and the blue position was small. small. Yeah. Oh. So it looks great. And it, you know, uh, was a bit of redemption, but it was a small position because that was all the money I had left. And so, um, you know, Ugh. these things happen. Now is that to, to be true? It looks like you got out a point and a half from where it ended. So, right. so you did good. I mean, in retrospect, it looks terrific, right? It also yeah. could have, right? Look what it did later in the day. I'm going to switch to 15 minutes. Look what it did later in the day. It went up even more, right? It went way down first. I never would have wanted to still be in it then. But then it went up as high as 132. Right. Huh. 
Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, we're at 9.34. I guess we're done. Um, so because I'm, I have to monitor the meeting here. Thank you all very much uh, for coming. And I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you at the next meeting. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you. Night all. Welcome, Thanks, Charles. Everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, hope Thanks, you enjoyed Dan. it, Charles. I did. Definitely. Nice meeting, everyone.